Good morning. Today I want to talk a little bit more about fruit bearing. I spoke a little bit about it yesterday and I want to continue to talk about that. So many times when it comes to fruit bearing, we see it as a prerequisite in order to go to heaven. Something that we must produce or bring forth so that God can accept us into the into another dimension, a higher dimension where our spirit goes and we just in a, in a better place. And we think that we should bring forth fruit in order to qualify. So fruit bearing is many times things where we just say, God, I'm trying my best to bring forth fruit. And uh, sometimes we will just have this quick prayer, oh God, you need to help me that I can stop my sin. And, uh, you know, and I, I just want to, I want to bear fruit. And we have our prayer asking God to help us, but we're still praying from the foundation that fruit bearing is something that we must do. The scripture is very clear when it comes to fruit bearing, and we can read that in uh, John chapter 15. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears not fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes or he cleanses it so that it will be it will bear even more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I have spoken to you. So what he's saying is, is that what uh, keeps a person from bearing fruit is a wrong word. It is believing something that is not right. And now Jesus comes and he gives a word, a word of the kingdom, a word of forgiveness. Uh, he brings the word of God. And as they hear that word, the word prunes them. The word cleanses them. So many times we think that pruning takes place in God cutting away things that we like or something like that, bringing us to difficult times, bringing sickness over our lives. That is not pruning. Pruning, the scripture clearly says here, you are pruned through the word that I have spoken to you. So the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus was preaching, that he would die, be buried, be raised from the dead, and that we would have the hope of the full manifestation of God in our lives where we will share in the glory of God that gospel of the kingdom as you can go and read in Mark chapter 1 from verse 14 onwards you can just do, do the whole of Mark chapter 1 but that gospel has pruned the disciples he has cleansed them so we are cleansed by the word by the gospel by the good news that is what cleanses us up so he says here you are already clean through the word that I have spoken to you. Now, it goes on and it says in verse 4, Remain in me as I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So of yourself, you cannot bear fruit. In order for a woman to think that she can bear fruit without a man, it is just simply impossible. It doesn't matter what the world says. It is impossible for a woman to bear, for, bear fruit without a man. Where is she going to find the sperm? She's going to find it from a man. So in the very same way, if uh, a woman is barren, and the and she receives the sperm, the word, that sperm that causes that pregnancy to take place in her has now cleansed her from barrenness. And then that is how she will bear fruit. It is impossible for her to bear fruit without a man. In the very same way Jesus says, it is impossible for you to bear fruit without me. So fruit bearing in our lives to a great degree is God's responsibility. The only thing that is our responsibility is that we unite ourselves with him. It's like in marriage or when you want to have children, you need to unite yourself with someone else. You have to become one flesh. Once that takes place, you find pregnancy comes forth and there can be life. So what Jesus Christ is saying here is that of yourself, you can do nothing. Last night, as I was uh, thinking about this, and this morning as well, I was thinking of a restaurant. You can go to a restaurant where food is served, 
and the will of the restaurant owner is that you would eat and share in the food that he has and then he will give you a menu of food that is available and what you then do is you ask the waiter to serve you with whatever is on the menu that you would like in the very same way the scripture says here that we will bear much fruit as we abide in him and of ourselves we cannot bear fruit but he brings forth the fruit in us and then it goes on it says whatsoever you ask in the name of Jesus you shall receive we can put it this way if you go to a restaurant that is a nice restaurant with healthy food that is very tasty you can say uh, that the will of that restaurant owner is that you will be satisfied and then he has and then it would you can basically go on to say that without uh, abiding in this restaurant and uh, let that menu that word of what we serve you abide in you it would be impossible for you to be really satisfied so then he would goes on go on and say whatever you ask and the context is what is on that menu is what they what the will of that restaurant owner is or what that chef is is for you to enjoy that food uh, whatever you ask you will receive so in the very same way, when it comes to the fruit of God, uh, we can link it with a scripture that says, we have not because we ask not. So when we think of what God's will is for our lives, and the scripture is clear in John 15 that the will of the Father is that we bear much fruit. He's not commanding us. Jesus got this commandment, and which is that if they are in you and you are in them, then I, the Father, will see that they bear much fruit through you. That's the will of the Father. So as we ask according to the will of the Father, which is simply to say, I'm sitting in the restaurant of heaven and I am ordering love for my neighbor. I am sitting in the restaurant of God, which is the union of God with man in the man Christ, and I am included in that unity, and I am ordering kindness. I am ordering temperance. That is what I am asking of God. That is the desire in my heart. And I can say this, a scripture, and I've said it yesterday as well, has bothered me for many years, which says, whatsoever you ask, you'll receive. Because it's true that we don't receive whatever we ask. Uh, it is it is simple. I mean, there are many things in my life, and I'm sure in your life, that you've prayed for, that you've asked for, that did not take place. But as it talks about fruit here, it says, It's the will of the Father that you ask and you receive and that you bear much fruit so that the world can see you are my disciples. In other words, you are taught and trained by me. We're in the very life of God is brought forth in us where we share in the very fruit of God. Now, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. In other words, on heaven's menu is peace. You can ask for peace for yourself. Peace, harmony between you and God, joy. Well, what a beautiful thing to be in any situation you could possibly find yourself in. And know that whatsoever you ask as pertaining to the very life of God, the fruit of God, can be given to you and shall be given to you by Jesus and the authority of heaven. And you can ask joy. He can bring joy forth in you as you abide in him and he abides in you as you see yourself one with God in Christ. Well, I don't want to make this message too long, but I'm sure this is thought-provoking and that it can bring a lot of joy. Some might say, oh Lord, I, I, I thought it meant I can ask for a car. Now, a car cannot make you happy. Now, you can still ask God. It's not that you cannot ask God for things and ask Him to help you or all those kind of things. But just know that the scripture also says, whatever needs you are, your Heavenly Father already knows that you have those needs. And then it says, rather seek his righteousness and his kingdom, which is that his, his righteousness is to bring himself forth in you. These other things will be added to us anyway. It is, it's a given. There are things that we can ask that this world cannot give us, and that is the very life of God. Stay blessed.